Let's talk for a moment here about uh, the davening. We've been talking about the Torah reading. And um, so today, let's talk a little bit about the Aliyah. And uh, then we'll move on to today's Chitas. So a person gets called up to an Aliyah. So it starts with the Gabbai calling out um, either during the week, Vesigala, Vesira, or Vyazar, Vyagin, on Shabbos and Yontif. And it's basically a call to the people, Havu Goydel, Alekenus, to Kabbalah Tari, to offer uh, honor and respect to the Torah. And we all call out afterwards, after he calls up the first Ola, the Kohen, we call out Baruch Shanos on Tari Lama Yisrael, Biktushas, a blessed is he who gave the Torah to the Jewish people in His Holiness. So that's a praise for God. So when we take out the Torah, it's a special time, as we talked about, and we're standing at the, at the Torah scroll where all, everybody's showing respect. So it's a time to praise God and thank Him for this great gift that He gave us, which is the uh, Torah. And uh, the way it works with the Aliyahs, so uh, the Kohen gets the first Aliyah because since the Kohenim have been um, uh, separated by God, to serve the Jewish people in the temple, to be the representatives of the people in performing the rites in the temple. So therefore they're held to a certain higher uh, uh, status. Uh, the higher status ba basically means that uh, they have certain restrictions that the rest of the people don't have and that they have to conduct themselves in a way beyond. As I've been talking to, I think Bruce, we were talking about this, right? The fact that uh, there are, there's, I don't know if we want to call it a hierarchy or at least a certain statuses, even within the Jewish people, doesn't make one person better than the other, greater than the other, but certain people are held to certain standards based on their position, which is the way of life in, in all aspects of life. We see that to be the case. So in, since the, the Kohenim have been designated by God to represent the people in the temple, and since that they're the representatives of the people, they're held to a certain standard in terms of, of, um, of their, their, the way they conduct themselves. So therefore, it's appropriate to honor them with the first Aliyah. Um, so the Kohen is always the, the, the first one to get these sort of uh, honorariums. And so the Kohen gets the first Aliyah. If there's no Kohen, obviously, you can go and move on. The Levite comes after the Kohen because the Levite also has an elevated certain status in terms of the fact that they, in, they assist the Kohenim in the temple service. So they would be next in line. And then the Israelites. Um, we're, this is not the time or the place to get into the, the intricacies of of somebody getting called up, they have, you, have an, you have a coin, you don't have a coin, you have a lady, you don't have a that with, with all those, that's really not, uh, not relevant to our conversation now. I just want to talk about the, the, the order of the Aliyah. So you get called up to the Torah. We talked already about the meaning of Aliyah, which is that traditionally the Torah was read from the podium, even, going back even into the temple. And so if you were called to read from the Torah, you had to get up onto the podium. So you're Ole, you went up onto the podium. But of course, it has other meaning as well, um, the idea that you that a person is ole, he goes up, he rises up, he has to climb up onto the uh, podium, up onto the stage, um, also symbolizes spiritual aliyah, spiritual elevation. And so, when a person is given an aliyah, there's a, there's a, a teaching from the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe that when a person uh, is called to the Torah, it's not just that he is physically lifts himself up, goes up a couple of steps, climbs up to the podium, but also every part of his soul, every level of his five levels of his soul is also ole, also rises, is also elevated. So an aliyah is a very uh, special uh, honor. Now, when a person is called to the Torah, um, so the, 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 since we don't want to keep the crowd waiting and we, we want to avoid unnecessary downtime in the service, people come to shul, they want to daven, they want to get their, their business done, and then they want to go home. And um, we know that it's very, uh, it could be very unsettling when you don't know things are dragging on, you don't know when they're going to end, how they're going to end. So in Jewish law, uh, the, uh, we're very concerned about what's called tirchad de tzibura. The tirchad de tzibura means uh, the unnecessary burdening of the congregation. And so therefore you like to run your, your minion or really anything else that you do when you're gathering people, you'd like it to run like a well-oiled machine, but to avoid unnecessary delays and get people, uh, you know, get, get people feeling that things are moving rather than just standing still. Mr. Cohen is shaking his head, he disagrees. Okay. But, uh, but so what, that's part of why when you get called to the Torah, you got to take your short route and get up there without, you know, making a whole scene and walking all the way around and taking your time. We want to get you up there and out of there. Besides the fact that also, if you take your time, it shows that you're, um, that you're a little hesitant or reluctant to approach the Torah, which is also not a good look for you. So therefore, we take the shortest route up to the Bima for the Aliyah. Um, we're going to continue talking about what happens at the Aliyah, God willing, uh, tomorrow. And uh, let's, uh, let's conclude with today's